Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to Inchcape Jaguar Guildford, I'm taking you on an in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video of this 2020 Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Inchcape Jaguar Guildford currently have this, in addition to many other high specification cars for sale, and all of their contact details can be found in the description of the video. Jaguar have been making cars since 1935, and in that time production has seen a variety of shapes and sizes, but it wasn't until 2016 that they ventured out from producing many coupes and saloons to their first SUV, F-Pace. Built with inspiration from the CX-17 concept, and to provide the manufacturer with larger appeal, F-Pace is currently available with eight different powertrain options, spelling 2.0-litre four-cylinder, 3.0-litre V6, and finally 5.0-litre V8, seen here in this range-topping Special Vehicle Racing, or SVR model. Constructed mainly from a lightweight aluminium architecture, F-Pace SVR comes in at 4,737mm long, 1,670mm high, 2,175mm wide, including the mirrors, and has an unladen weight of 2,070kg. We can now move to SVR's powertrain, but before we can view the engine, we first need to unlatch the bonnet. This can be done by a single pull of the latch to the left of the passenger's footwell. Then moving around to the front, a small catch must first be pushed to the left before the bonnet can be lifted up and self-supported on two struts. Here, we can see the bonnet vents are functional and help to keep the engine cool and provide a more aggressive aesthetic. F-Pace SVR shows the F-Type SVR's engine, a front-mounted 5.0-litre supercharged V8 that produces 543 brake horsepower and 680 Nm of torque. This output produces a 0-62 mph or 100km per hour time of 4.3 seconds and goes on to a top speed of 173 mph or 283km per hour. SVR is offered with three wheel options, but here comes with a 22 inch front and rear diamond turn split spoke alloys. Braking is provided by 395mm front and rear discs. These have been enlarged by 45mm over the lower models. SVR still has spring coil suspension, as in the lower models, but they are now 30% stiffer at the front and 10% stiffer at the rear due to the harder springs. This suspension setup comes with Bilstein adaptive dampers to allow the driver to adjust the ride height to different driving conditions. SVR is of course all-wheel drive and is fitted with an adaptive surface response system that allows it to configure itself for different road surfaces. SVR also comes with an active differential and brake facilitated torque vectoring for sharper, more controlled cornering. Now we've finished the model overview, we can start the exterior in-depth tour from front to back, making comparisons to lower F-Pace models as we progress. SVR comes with an entire SVR body kit that starts at the bottom with this enlarged lower intake. On either side, the lateral intakes have also been enlarged to provide increased airflow to the radiators. To the outside edge of these are vents. These vents help air to flow more freely through the front and direct air away from the disruptive front wheels. The main intake and grille above is unchanged, other than the SVR badge to the right. Moving up, this car has the adaptive LED headlights as standard, with the signature LED daytime running lights. Moving back, the large bonnet still holds the same undulating form as the other models, but now comes with these two vents on either side to enhance engine cooling and the aesthetic. Behind this is the large, laid-back windscreen with two rain-sensing wipers below. Continuing back, SVR comes with this fixed panoramic sunroof and rails on each side as standard. We can now move to SVR's lateral aspect. At the bottom, there are extended side skirts and these air management channels at the front to control turbulent airflow coming off the front wheels. The front wheel arches have been extended and come with these large vents to help to release pressure and help to assist brake cooling. Moving up and back, we come to the unchanged electrically adjustable auto dimming wing mirrors with integrated indicators and comfort lighting. Behind, the long door handles are also unchanged and come with dimples that indicate the car's keyless entry system. Continuing back and on the right side here, we come to the fuel tank flap. It can be opened and closed with just a light depress. SVR has an 82 litre fuel tank capacity and returns a combined MPG of 22.6. Moving back up to the roof, the only other feature before we can roll over to the rear of the car is the large shark fin antenna. The rear of the lower models also comes with this rooftop spoiler, but in SVR it has been extended with a slim strip at the rear. In the middle of the wing, there's an integrated LED brake light strip, a standard feature across all F-Pace models. Moving down, the tinted rear window with its single wiper is also unchanged. 
Below this, but above the number plate, is the reversing camera from the Park Assist system, a standard feature here. Moving down, the LED rear light complexes hold the typical Jaguar form and wrap around the sides for enhanced visibility. Below these, the rear arches have been extended and, just as the front, come with vents to enhance airflow and reduce arch pressure. Underneath, the entire bumper has also been extended. It starts on either side with these air management channels. Centrally, there's an enlarged contrast diffuser. On either side are the exhaust surround areas, with two 95mm chrome tailpipes from the valve control system. Let's hear how SVR sounds, first with the valves closed and then open. <laughs> Now we've finished the exterior in-depth tour, we can move inside. SVR comes with a standard Jaguar key with buttons to lock, unlock, turn on the lights and open the boot lid. Now moving to the inside of SVR, the large door handles are easy to locate and pull out, as are the doors. This car is upholstered in the two-tone light oyster and ebony lozenge quilted leather with these SVR performance seats and piano black veneer. Carbon and aluminium options are also available. We can now start the in-depth interior tour with the doors. They start with a flat angled panel that levels out as we move along it. Towards the front we find controls for the electric windows, mirrors and child lock. The centre of the door is broken into two flowing leather upholstered panels. The top one comes with a separate meshed aluminium inlay with door release. Carbon can also be specced here. The lower panel is upholstered in light oyster and flows down to form the armrest. It leads onto the door handle and memory controls for the seats, internal lock controls and first speaker from the standard Meridian system. A surround option is also available. Finally, the bottom of the front doors comes with this open storage area and second Meridian door speaker. Now we've finished with the doors, we can move inside. SVR has a ride height of 161mm, but is easy to move in and out of thanks to its slim sill. Moving along the sill, we first come to the SVR kick plate. An illuminated kick plate is also available. Continuing along, we come to the boot lid release and controls for the adaptive cruise control system and first manually adjustable air vent. Moving up and to the left, we come to the SVR steering wheel. This is differentiated from others by its darkened inlays and SVR badge at the bottom. Moving around it, we find contrast stitch and controls for the instrument cluster, calls and voice assistance to the left, and extended controls for the cruise control system to the right. To turn the car on, the button to the right of the central column needs to be depressed. Before we can move to the fully digital instrument cluster, we first see the small aluminium gear shift paddles for the car's 8-speed ZF transmission. The screen ahead features the speedo to the left, central infotainment display and revs and gear selected to the right. The central screen can display vehicle status, access to driver assistance controls, the trip, display configuration controls, vehicle info such as tyre pressure and oil level, and meter display and controls. Moving up and back from this screen, we come to the dash that started with a tweeter. The strut the speaker sits on swings around the front, providing venting and a further tweeter to the left. Now moving down on the central column, we come to two many adjustable air vents. Below these is the 10-inch touchscreen display for the in-controlled TouchPro infotainment system. This screen also comes with digital TV and CD DVD options and the ability to have it present in a dual view format so the driver and front passenger can view separate things simultaneously. The home screen starts with these three options but there's also a configurable page to the left. 
Swiping to the left brings us to the main menu screen that includes eco data for in-depth trip info. In the main menu, we can also access Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, the camera, seat options and further connectivity options. Swiping again brings us to a second menu screen. Here we can access the dynamic eye options. When in this option with dynamic mode selected, the engine, steering, gear shift and suspension can be manually configured. To the right, a stopwatch and G-meter can also be found and finally pedals for real-time pedal usage with a graph. The final optional feature that can be added here is the configurable ambient lighting. The bar running underneath offers direct access and adjustment for the cameras and sensors. Then the map, which offers points of interest and can be easily manipulated through touch controls. The screen for hands-free calls and messages and contacts list comes next. Media comes after that for the AM, FM and DAB digital radio and the management of devices. Controls for the front seats are next, here only displaying temperature, but cooling is also available with other seat options. The following options allow the user to configure the infotainment system. Moving away from the screen, we come to the first physical control array on the central column for the CD player, passenger zone temperature adjustment with display, sync, front and rear demist, hazard lights, air direction, seat adjustment, auto, then the driver's temperature controls, AC, max AC, fan speed, max front demist, recirculation, the infotainment on-off and volume rotary, and finally the engine on-off button. Below the button array is this small open storage area with a slip-proof floor. Moving back, we come to the now very familiar Jaguar automatic gear shifter for the 8-speed ZF transmission. The gearbox can be left in full auto, but changing can also be done by using the paddles behind the wheel and by pushing this to the left for sequential shifting. There is a small line of buttons behind this four from left to right, start-stop, drive mode selection from ice to dynamic, and to turn the traction control on or off. There are two features behind this, the first being this gloss black lid. It can be pushed back to reveal two large cup holders. To the right of the cup holders, we come to the final button ray to open or close the exhaust valves, to adjust the adaptive cruise control and to apply the parking brake. Continuing back, we come to the central column's final feature in the front, this large, leather upholstered armrest. The small button at the front can be depressed so it can be lifted up to reveal an indentation at the top, then dual USB, micro SIM and 12 volt inputs, and finally a narrow but deep storage area. Before moving away from the central column, we can roll around to the side where we find these additional open storage areas. On either side of the central column, we find these quilted leather performance seats that are unique to SVR in the F-Pace lineup. They feature model embossing on the headrests, and all movement controls can be found to the outside edge. Now we finish in the front, we can move to the rear. Unsurprisingly, the rear doors open up in the same way as the front doors, and on their insides come with the same aluminum mesh inlay surrounding the door release, single window control and small plastic door handle, open storage area and speaker at the bottom. Before we take a more in-depth look around the rear, let's start with a POV tour. We begin at the headrest of the performance seats. As we move down their smooth backs, we come to these storage nets. Then turning left, we come to the rear climate controls, rear seating and large dual sunroofs above. Now looking at these elements in more detail, we can start at the rear climate controls. There are two manually adjustable air vents at the top heat seating controls in the middle, and dual USB and single 12 volt at the bottom. A full rear climate control system with a screen can also be spec'd here. The rear bench is comprised of two full seats either side of a central occasional seat. The main seats come with the quilted centre sections and side bolstering just as those in the front. The back of the occasional seat can be easily pulled down to reveal a dual armrest equipped with dual cup holders. Now that we've finished in the rear, we can move back to the front briefly to view the car's remaining storage. On the passenger's side, we of course find the glove compartment. This is lockable and can be opened by putting the catch to the right. It offers quite a deep, illuminated storage area as standard, but this space can also be cooled and come with an air quality sensor. 
Moving around to the rear, the boot lid can be opened using the button inside, but also the button on the door itself and the key. In this configuration, the rear boot has a standard capacity of 385 litres, but this can be enhanced to 1290 litres with the rear seats folded down. Taking a closer look at this space, we find a small netted storage area to the left, liftable boot floor and foldable rear seats, with an access panel and hooks to the right. Looking down, the boot floor can be lifted up to fill the spare wheel or extra capacity. After finishing in the rear, the boot lid can be auto-closed by depressing the button here. We can now move back inside briefly to view the car's final features. On either side, there are large sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. Moving centrally, we find a deployable sunglasses case, microphones for the hands-free system, service light, controls for the sunroof and sunshade, and SOS calls. Looking back, we can also get a better idea of how the panoramic sunroof looks from the front. Finally, there is a large, auto-dimming, seamless rearview mirror below. So that concludes my in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video of this 2020 Jaguar F-Pace SVR that's for sale with Inchcape Jaguar Guildford at the time of publishing. All of their contact details can be found in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.